Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he, Jesus, spoke a parable unto them to this end. So this is Jesus addressing the people who were there, mainly Pharisees. He had just told them about the fact that there will be a separation. There will be a separation. One will be taken, one will be left behind. And now he's telling them a parable. This, in chapter 18, the story goes on, and he's going to try to tell you who God is and what this separation actually means, all right? So he says to the, to the people there, men always ought to pray, all right? So he's telling them, look, all of you, pray, be in communion with your father, know who he is, and not to faint, all right? Next verse, saying, here's the start of the parable. This parable is significant in the sense that it tells you who your father is, who God is, all right? There was in a city a judge, okay? So he's telling them, this is in this city, in this worldly city, there is a judge, which feared not God, you see? He does this, this judge doesn't care. He was a worldly judge. He was full of his own wisdom. He loved himself. He loved his job as a judge. Neither regarded men. He was very proud. He doesn't care about the people. He doesn't care about God. It was about him, himself, and his position as a judge. All right, let's move on. And now he's contrasting it, this judge. And there was a widow in that city. And she came to this judge saying, Avenge me of my adversary. So there was some wrong done, and this woman is asking for help. Let's continue on with this parable. But this judge, he would not for a while. He says, why should I help this woman? Why should I help her? But afterwards, that means after some time has gone by, he said to himself, within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubles me, all right, because this widow is asking for help, right? Circumstances are not so good in her life, so she's asking for help. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me out. All right? And the Lord say, hear what the unjust judge says. All right, let's stop there for a moment. Very simple story, but with profound meaning. The story is once again, is this. The judge says, well, I don't really care about this widow. I don't really care about men. I don't care about God. Basically, I don't care about all of these people. But this widow, she, came, she comes and she's bothering me. I don't really want to help her, but because she may come and bother me again and again and again, so I will help her because she may make me weary. She may make me tired. She will make me irritated. So I'm going to help her because she wearies me out. Okay? So let's see the common interpretation of this parable. So what do you think people say when they read this parable? Okay, in general, this is the explanation. Okay? You, you, should be like this widow. Okay? You come to God first time, and God doesn't seems like God doesn't hear you. So what should you do? Come on. Come again. And if it seems like God is not there, God is not answering you, what should you do as the, as the widow? Come on. Come again. 
You should come again until you irritate God and then God will answer you. So, you should be perseverant. That's a good quality trait. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. You should be perseverant. You should not give up. You should come again. And, but you see, the parable is very specific. You should come to God until you weary Him out, you see. I mean, He's God who never tires. But you should be so persistent. I mean, you scream to God. You tell Him everything. You, you just shout to Him until He gets so sick of you that He finally says, I am so sick of you, my daughter, that I'm going to answer you. Now, how do you like that explanation? <laughs> you, you see how a simple thing like that can be twisted in such a way that it shows you that you have to do this and do this and do this until you get an answer. And of course, you don't like that explanation since I've just read it to you line by line and I've explained it to you and shown it to you what the explanation normally is. And they forget to read what's the next verse. You see, people take a certain scripture out, they take it out, and they say, look, this is what it says. But nobody reads what comes before and what comes after. Because the moment you read something which comes before and what comes after, what you just read changes its meaning. All right, so let's read verse 7 which is the verse which comes after that whole story. Okay, this is what Jesus is saying. Shall not God avenge His own elect, which cry day and night to Him? So you see, we bring, we pray to Him, we bring our petitions to Him, though He bear long with them. Okay, next verse. I tell you, so Jesus is saying, I tell you, all you people who are doing this long, long, buttering like prayers to God and you think that God will answer you because you do that? Does that sound familiar? Who prays long prayers and love to be seen by people? The Pharisees, you see? He is addressing the Pharisees. And this is what Jesus says. I tell you that He will avenge them, what? Speedily. You see, God is a speedy answering prayer God. God is not like this judge in the parable. This unjust judge doesn't want to answer anybody. This unjust judge takes a long, long, long time before he will answer. And only because you are bothering him. So do you think that that judge stands for God? Of course not. That judge is the antithesis of God. The opposite of who God is. You see, when you ask God for help, when you come before God as a daughter, as a daughter, as a son, when you come before God, this is what you get. I tell you that He will avenge them speedily. He, was, he is a just God. He will make things right in your life. How soon? Come on. Speedily. Actually, He answers your prayers before you even ask Him. So, you, Jesus is distinguishing between two groups here. He is saying, look, there is an unjust judge. He don't care about God. He doesn't care about men. He doesn't care about anybody. But if you bother Him enough, He may or he may not, answer you. And then he says, God, your father, is not like that. Your father 
when He hears you crying to Him, when He hears your prayers, He answers you speedily. Vroom! It's answered. Why? Because He's a good Father. He is a just God. He is not an unjust God like that judge. All right? So that judge has nothing to do with God. Some people have elevated that judge to the position of God, but actually it's the opposite. That judge don't like you, don't like God, he only cares about himself. All right? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on this earth? Faith, all right? So then people say, well, what about faith? Yes. We put our faith in Jesus. We put our faith in God. We put our faith in the one who has accomplished the work. That is where our faith is. So when God sees our faith, he is seeing our faith that we put in Jesus. Not in ourselves as to how good we are. Well, you know, that person has bothered me enough, therefore I will answer. That's the Pharisee way. The Pharisees love to do that. The Pharisees love to show people how good they are. Look, I have answered your prayers, so I'm good. Whereas God says, I see your faith in Jesus. I see your faith in Jesus. And because I see your faith in Jesus, I will answer you speedily. And of course, we know the truth, as I just mentioned. Actually, God answers us before we even pray to Him. Okay? Let's continue on now. <laughs> and look, here is. He spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. Who do you think these certain people are? The Pharisees, you see. So you see, Jesus is talking now. He's going to tell them more and he's going to tell them more because he wants them to see who they are versus that widow, the person who says, well, I have nothing. I have nothing. Versus the Pharisees who say, I'm in the position, I can do many things, and it's all up to me. Look, he spoke this parable on the certain, then left out certain things, but we know who these certain people are, which trusted in themselves that they were righteous. I'm such a nice person. I am so good. I can do it. You see, I even help out that woman. But of course, you know, after a long time and because it's really not for her, it's for me because, hey, you know, that, that, that woman is really troubling me, you know, so. So, I, I am righteous and what? Despise others. I actually despise that widow, but, you know, I'm going to help them, you know, as a Pharisee. Well, you know, it doesn't look so good if this woman comes and begs me every day, you know, for help and I don't answer. So, here comes another one, another parable. Now here, this, this parable is a parable that is so fantastic because it clearly delineates, marks up one group from the other group. Now, anybody that you talk to, anybody that you talk to will fall in one of these two groups, okay? Now, if you feel really offended by this parable, that means you're in one group. If you feel really loved by this parable, then you're in another group. And there's no in-between. So when we go through this parable, it's a very simple parable. Think how you feel on the inside, all right? Are you ready? Okay. Two men. Two women, two people, all right? Went up to the temple to pray. Simple. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Pharisee, 
oh, I'm so good. Publican, hey, I'm a tax collector. I am the worst of the worst. I'm, I'm taxing my own people for the Romans. I'm not taxing my people for my people, for my state. I'm taxing people for another government. Scum of the scum. Okay, never mind. Move on. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. You see, he prayed with himself. God, I thank you that I am not as other men are. You know that guy over there? That scum? I'm not as other men. What other men were standing there with him? The publican, the tax collector. You know, I'm not as the other man. What, is this, what does he do? Extortioner. <laughs> He's taking money from you. He's extorting money. Extortioners, unjust. Unjust guy. God, you see that? He's extortioner. He's unjust. <laughs> He's an adulterer. Of course, he doesn't even know that, but anyway, let's throw in all the things, you know. A anything you can throw on him, throw on him, you see. Extortioner, unjust, adulterous. <laughs> hey, then let's come and name him out loud. Or even as this tax collector, this publican, man, you know. Okay, so are you in this category? <laughs> man, I'm so good. I'm not like that guy over sitting over there. I'm not like that person in the back there. I'm not like this person. I'm not like this person. I'm, man, I'm a great person. I am great. Not like that person over there. Okay, now he, he's going to tell him, tell God what he did. I fast twice in a week. Hmm. See? Do you think that guy fast? No, so I must be holy. You see, my fasting makes me holy. My fasting makes me acceptable to God. Because I fast, I'm a better person. Has anybody ever told you that? I fast twice. Not once, but twice, you see, in one week. Of course, we, we, could get, we could hear people who say, I fast five times a week, you know. In fact, I fast seven times a week. I don't eat at all. <laughs> Look, you can take it to any extreme, right? But this is basically what people do to each other. And here is the perfect parable. I fast twice a week and I give tithes of all that I possess. I gave. Not knowing that God gave to him first. You see, nowhere does it say God, he never thought, hey, God gave to me first. That's why I can give. We all give but it's because God gave to us first. In fact, God gave His Son to us, right? While we were yet, come on, sinners. God is a giving God. But this Pharisee, he says, look, I fast, not once, twice, all right? I give my tithes. You see, I must be a better person. Because first of all, I didn't do what he did. Extortioner, unjust, adultery, whatever I can throw on him, I throw on him. And now this is what I do. I give, I fast, I pray. I do all of these things. So I do certain things and I don't do other things. So I must be better. Remember, he was a Pharisee. He was a keeper of the law. He was an interpreter of the law. So what does the law say? Do good, you get good. Do bad, you get bad. So the only way to get blessed is to do the law. But he forgets that if he even misses one point of the law, he is guilty of the whole law, all the law. But anyway, he doesn't remember that one because, hey, he's already done some things, so he must be good. Let's continue on down. And the publican, that undeserved guy, standing afar off, 
You see, he cannot even stand close to the Pharisee. He stands far off. He thinks himself not deserving, not worthy. And many people think like this. They come to God and they say, God, I'm not worthy, so I'll stand afar off. I will stand far away from you, God, because I'm not worthy. You know, those people who are worthy, they will stand close to God. Because I'm not worthy, I will stand far away. How many of us have ever gone through like that? Of course we have. You know, we all feel bad sometimes, and then we feel that we are far from God. But is that true? Just because we feel far away from God, does that mean that God has removed Himself from us? Of course not. Let's read on. And He would not lift up so much as His eyes onto heaven because He felt so unworthy. He felt so undeserving. He felt bad about Himself. You could put yourself there. She felt bad about herself. And so she removed herself because she felt not worthy. Smote upon his breast. He's beating upon his breast. Saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me. Remember, Jesus haven't, haven't died yet. So he was a sinner. So he said, Jesus, God, Father, be merciful to me. I am a low-down sinner. All right? So now, of course, because Jesus is telling this parable, He's going to tell you what actually happened. So I tell you, all right, to all these people out there, this man went down to his house justified. His, Jesus says, look, there's two guys here. There's the Pharisee and there's this publican. And he says, this publican, this man, went down to his house, went back home, justified, justified, made right with God. Justified before God. Rather than the other one, the Pharisee, for everyone that exalts himself shall be abased. Who exalted himself? The Pharisee, right? But you can see that he exalted himself in his own works. I didn't do that. I did this. He exalted his own works. This is what I did or this is what I didn't do. And he that humbles himself. Okay, humble in what sense? You see, the publican was undeserving. He knew what he had done. He knew that he could never measure up if there was a measuring tape, you know. Let's measure the publican. Let's measure that tax collector. He doesn't measure up. He knows his faults. He knows who he is. But look at what Jesus says. He humbled himself. He didn't humble himself like falling on his face or something. You see, he humbled himself because he accepted, he accepted the free gift that Jesus gave to him. He didn't say, I don't need this free gift because I'm so good. I already fasted, I tithed, I prayed, I already helped out in the community. So, I don't need you. Why do I need this free gift? Why do I need Jesus? Because I am so good. That's not humbling. Humbling is when you say, like this publican, I was undeserving. But because of you, Jesus, I became deserving. I deserve it because of you, Jesus. He humbled himself 
Therefore, he shall be exalted. The moment you come to Jesus and you say, Jesus, you know, you know, I, you know I did my best, you know, but my, my, my mess wasn't good enough. Okay. So, I, 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 you know, I tried. I couldn't do it. And the moment you say that, I need you, Jesus. You know, my faith is in you, Jesus. Because my faith, small, smaller than a mustard seed. But Jesus, your faith is perfect, complete. So I put my little faith in your perfect faith. I put my little faith in your perfect faith. Perfect faith of Jesus. And when God sees Jesus, when God sees Jesus' perfection, the faith of Jesus who is perfect in His Father, God looks at us and says, whoa, you, 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 each one of you, he sees that same faith which was planted in Jesus, which Jesus had. And he says, yes, my son, I'm going to exalt you because you humbled yourself and you accepted the free gift. You didn't come and stand out there and say, look, I am so good, I don't need the free gift. I receive it. And therefore, that's why the undeserving deserved. And the one who looks like they were deserving became undeserving. They were abased, put low down. But the one who didn't deserve was exalted. God lifted you up. God saw Jesus in you. And God says, look, you don't have to stay far away. You come. You come. You come. You come. Because he sees Jesus' perfect faith in you. He sees you whole. He sees you once again deserving because you were undeserving. So how do you think the Pharisees like that? How do you think the Pharisees like this parable? You see, if you go tell somebody about this, they will, they will hate you too. But it's right here in the Bible. So unless you cut out this part of your Bible, you know, take your scissors and you cut this part out, this shows you that division. This shows you who your father is. How much he loves you. How much he cares for you. How much a price he put upon you. You don't have to stay afar off. You can come close. And you say, I don't feel like it. Exactly. The publican didn't feel like it also. But he says, I'm going to exalt him. I'm going to exalt each and every one of you because you are my son. You are my daughter. I am going to exalt you. And that comes from God, not from me. He says, you who think yourself nothing, you are everything because of Jesus in you, because of who you are. Okay? You want to go on some more? Let's go on some more. And here is the, we're not going to go fully into this today, all right? But here is one whereby, you know, once again, everybody has interpreted it their own way and anyway. Remember, it just came after that parable, right? And they brought unto him also infants, in this case, young children, all right? Not babies. That he would touch them, but when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called unto them and said, Suffer, little children, okay, to come unto me. Suffer little children to come unto me. And forbid them not. Look, don't forbid these children to come to me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. For of such 
is the kingdom of heaven. Next verse. Verily I say to you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Okay? And here comes the interpretation. Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. So people say, well, what does Jesus mean? You know? Of course, they never read the verses before and you know, it doesn't matter what comes after too. So they say, look, this is what it says. If you do not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, you cannot enter in. So that means you'll never get to heaven unless you are a little child. So then they say, well, that doesn't sound correct. I mean, because they take it this out and they say, that's what it stands for. So you, have, you must be a little child. No, that don't sound right. Okay, let's change it, okay? Let's use man's wisdom because there's other parts of the Bible dealing with this. Then they said, no, it means that you must have childlike faith. You see, that's the key. You cannot have adult-like faith. You must have childlike faith, then you get to heaven. Now, let, let's be serious, okay? Do you think an adult has less faith than a child? No. Many, many times, adults have greater faith because over the years, they have seen the goodness of God. They have gone through circumstances. They have gone through a lot. So I would say that adults have great faith as well, maybe even greater. Do children have faith? Yes, they have. So who is to say that only childlike faith can make you enter into the kingdom of heaven? So everybody is now thinking, well, how do I have childlike faith? You know, all of you adults here, you know, well, maybe we should all go on to the children's church and learn childlike faith. Because, <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, why, why do we have this program here if God says all of you should have childlike faith. But are you sure that is the correct interpretation? Yes, I would like to say childlike faith, that's great. But adults also have faith. So what is he talking about here? What, what was the parable that just was given? One parable after another. What was Jesus trying to teach them? Let's go back a few verses again and see, start again from, all right? Jesus called them unto him, that's all the children, and says, Suffer, don't, don't, don't prevent these little children to come to me. Forbid them not. Don't tell them they cannot come. For of such, so he is talking about children, yes. Little children, yes. For of such is the kingdom of God. Very young children, Small children, that's what he's talking about. For of such is the kingdom of God. So he is talking about children. So if he's not talking about childlike faith, what is he talking about? Now you have to relate back to the other parable because he just finished that parable and then he tell the children to come. There were two things happening in the other parable, right? The one who exalted himself was a base. And the one who humbles himself was exalted. Correct? Now, let's look at two groups of people here. The other one was the Pharisee and the publican. This is adults versus children. He specifically pointed out something to, his, to the people there. And he says, look, this children, these children, that's what we're talking about. So people scratch their heads for years, decades, centuries trying to figure this one out. You go back to the next verse. Uh, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child. Okay, let's read. Whosoever 
All of you here listening, all right, to that parables. Now you're still here. Listen to this. Whosoever shall not, what? What's the word used here? Receive. Okay, let's go back to that Pharisee and the publican. Who received from God? The Pharisee or the publican? The publican. Remember, humble himself? He humbled himself. He says, I have nothing. The publican came to God and said, I am nothing. I'm not, I, I, I didn't fast. I didn't tithe. You know, I did this. I did, I, I did everything wrong. So Jesus, Father, I can only do one thing. I can receive from you. I have nothing to give. I am nothing. But I receive from you. And that's why the undeserving deserve. Now, let's see. The little children, okay, think about a little child. One year old, two years old, all right? You are the adult, right? You bring some uh, really nice chocolate and you give to this one-year-old kid. You give. You, you, you give, all right? You are the parent. You give. What does the child do? The child receives it and says, thank you, hopefully. All right? But the child receives it. Am I correct? Am I correct? The, the child receives it. Says thank you. Now, let's talk about a doubt. Okay? Now, this is another part of the Bible, actually, where Jesus lays it out clearly. You go to a gathering, all right? of adults, rich adults, people of high positions. And you go and you give a gift, all right? You say, look, rich adult of high stature, you give your gift. And the adult receives the gift and the adult says, wait, I also have a gift for you. Look, you give to him. He gives you. He says, here, I have ten of this here. I give to you. And you receive the gift, sometimes a better gift than what you gave. So what just happened? What, what, what just happened, you see? You give to the little child, you give the box of, uh, you know, uh, oh yeah, what chocolates? Uh, Raffaello, Godiva, what else? <laughs> what else? Come on, yeah. You give, and the child says, thank you. Yes, you know. Does the child ever think about giving you back? No. You see, the adult thinks about, how can I give you back? So when God gives them the free gift, they say, hmm, I wonder what God wants back in return for that free gift of Jesus. I wonder what I should do back for God. I'll pay back God. I know I will fast twice a week. <coughs> Do you fast twice a week? You don't? <laughs> you don't? <laughs> I do. You see, I'm trying to pay back God for the free gift. Because I'm an adult. And that's what Jesus was trying to show here. Jesus says, Whosoever shall not, what? Receive. The little child will just, Hey, you're going to give me heaven? Fine. You know, I'm receiving it. And that's why all children really doesn't know good and bad. You know, when they die, people have asked me, do they go to heaven? The answer is yes. Immediately, they go to heaven. Immediately. 
whosoever shall not receive because the child says, yes, you gave to me, I receive it. Thank you. Receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. You see, it's not about who deserves it, who undeserves it, who is not deserving, who is worthy, who is not worthy. It's about receiving a free gift. Who wants to receive the free gift? The widow receive the free gift. The publican receive the free gift. The little children, come on, receive the free gift. Every one of those examples shows you someone receiving, receiving, receiving. And then there's the other one who says, I don't want to receive because I'm already good. I don't care about men. I don't care about God. I don't care about the other guy. You know, I, I fast and I tithe. Or I'm an adult. You see, Jesus clearly showed. And then you go on. If you go on to the next verse, that's the start of that young man who says, which we have dealt with uh, since last year, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Hey, hey, you know, come on, Jesus, tell me what must I do? I'm a good person. What must I do? And Jesus says, well, go do that thing. And he couldn't do it. Because he couldn't even do the first commandment. Couldn't do it. But he says, hey, I've done everything. You see, clearly and step by step through Scripture, God shows you, I have a free gift for you. His name is Jesus. You receive him. Whether you are good, whether you are bad, you receive Him. It has nothing to do with your goodness or your badness or where you are, your position in life. It has to do with us, like little children, receiving the free gift. And we say, thank you, Father, for giving us Jesus. For giving us Jesus. The Pharisee could have done the same thing. Just go before God and say, thank you. Yes, I'm a Pharisee, but thank you, Father. You gave me everything. I believe in you. And there were Pharisees who did that. But then there were other Pharisees who said, no, I don't want, because I'm such a good person. Or I can give you back, God, in fasting and tithing. Or you can be like the publican, the children, the widow, and say, thank you, Father. I am undeserving, but... You make me deserving. You make me deserving. You make me worthy. You make me priceless. You exalted me when I was a base. You lifted me up. Thank you, Father, so much. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 